wife complains about how much time I spent grooming and landscaping the yard. She wants a nice yard but gets very upset about me working at it all day Saturday and sleeping in on Sunday. After working as hard as I do on my job and then keeping the house and the yard looking good, all I want to do is relax on Sunday morning. Everyone in the neighborhood tells her how beautiful her yard looks, thanks to me, and she seemed to be very proud of that, but she's still not satisfied. She thinks I love my yard and yard work more than anything else and tells me my hobby is my God. Where do you think she gets an idea like that from? Besides, didn't God create a man in a garden? God likes a beautiful garden, you know, like I keep mine. And didn't God say I should relax on the Sabbath? So I'm doing what he told me to do. If my wife wants to go and spend half the day in church, that's her business. For me, I just want my couch and a remote on Sunday morning. God, you know my heart, you know where I am if you want to see me about anything. To lighten our hearts and to cause us to go forth and to possess all the promises that you have so willingly given us. We bless you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Tonight is awesome. We're in our... 39 minutes of counting. Uh, we're talking about, you know, the various types of prayers. We have talked about the prayer of agreement. And we've talked about the prayer of uh, commitment. We've talked about the prayer of intercession. I was going to hit on that tonight a little bit more. The Lord said, no, I want you to move on to another prayer. So tonight we're going to be talking about the power or the prayer of praise and worship. And so... Tonight, we're talking about the power of praise and worship. All right? And uh, got to follow me on this real quick because this, this is good stuff here. Amen. The power of praise and worship. All right. Tonight, my focus is going to be one part of that, which is the power of praise. Amen. Not the power, but the prayer of, the, the prayer of praise. Okay? And, uh, and so we want to talk on that, but I want you to know that prayer, amen, the the, the Prayer of praise is a power that God has given us, and it is a weapon. Many of us, we face situations. Many times we fail to do this, and uh, and I'm going to show you something in the Scripture. It's going to bless you, man. It's going to really tremendously bless you. So now we got to understand we have weaponry in our access as believers that we don't utilize all the time. Because time with life hits us and punches us, and it knocks the spiritual wind out of us. And sometimes we don't recover until two days later, three days, a month later. We're so focused on the punch and what's going on instead of breaking out and begin to worship and praise the Lord. Amen. And that's something that we're going to do tonight for a little bit. Then I want you to go home and practice and practice that principle all this week. And let's begin to watch the activity of our lives to see what happens differently as a result of us practicing the word. That's what we're learning the word. We wanna, once we learn the word of God, and we want to be responsible to practice the word of God. Amen. That's, that's, that's the wonderful thing as a believer. When we learn the word, we want to practice the word. Okay, So we're talking about tonight the prayer of praise and worship. Now, this prayer, again, is a serious weapon not used enough by saints. Praise is God's prescription for changing your environment. Praise is God's prescription for changing your environment. Anytime you want something to immediately change, I'm going to show you in the scripture, when you want something to immediately change, you begin to break, bust out and praise God. But see, sometimes, how many know when you go through stuff, praise ain't on our minds immediately. Amen. It ain't on your mind. You're like, man, I can't believe this so-and-so and so. Not that you cuss nobody out. I can't believe this circumstance. I can't believe this. I can't believe, you know what? And, you, and you're trying to get on the phone and call everybody about what happened. And you're just like in disbelief. I can't, man, what, and sometimes we go confessing the wrong things, like what, what's next? What, what next? Like you really can handle, you can't handle what just happened. You know what I mean? So we, 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 we sometimes when things hit us, instead of us breaking to a praise, you know what, I'm just stand right here and praise the Lord. Amen. We don't do that. We don't do that. It takes, it takes a focus to do that now. I mean, you talking about something hits you like, wham. Instead of us just like, you know what, let me go to my bathroom get to pray, and just begin to worship God and praise him. It changes the environment. Amen. And I'm going to show you what it does. All right, now, 
How many have heard the name of Judah? Woo! How many heard that? All right, now, this is critical. This name, I'm, I'm going to tie this into uh, the lesson because it's all like one and the same. Talk about, again, the prayer of praise. Now, the name Judah is based on the Hebrew word yada. How many have heard the word yada spelled Y? A D A H. How many have heard of a yada? How many raise your hands? You never heard of. You never heard of raise your hands. All right, that's a word. Say yada. yada. All right, now you just you just learned a Hebrew word. Amen. Yada. Say yada. yada. Hebrew. That's Hebrew. So you know more than English. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so so yada is a Hebrew word, and it's also uh, uh, you know it, it, it's it's a a, 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 a r- r- relative word of Judah, and it also means to revere or worship with extended hands to make confession to praise and or to give thanks, thankful, thanksgiving. Judah name literally means praise. Say praise. Praise. All right. So we're going to look at some scriptures real quick. The word, when you say Judah, you're talking about praise. Judah means praise. Yada, all relative, relative words, means to worship with extended hands. All right, now, let's do this real quick. Um, Lord Jesus, it's all so wonderful, all so good. Okay, let's do this real quick. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's, let's go to, uh, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. I'll I tell you what I'm going to do. I don't want to jump all over the place. Um, let's go to Judges. Let's go to Judges, and I'm going to get into the points. My time is limited, so I, I want to be... Uh, very mindful of the time because I know the clock people are not going to give me no more time <laughs> and um, so I want to be very 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 mindful of uh, what I give you so we can just kind of get into this Judges chapter 20 um, and if you have it say I have it alright look at Judges chapter 20 let's look at verse number 18 y'all doing alright tonight Man, I got 34 minutes, and Dougie Fresh is off. Y'all ready? All right, look at verse 18. Ready, read. Come on, everybody don't have still pages turning. Y'all there? Verse 18, ready, read. And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God and asked counsel of God and said, Which of, which of us shall go up first to, battle, to the battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, look up. There's a lesson my archbishop preached years ago, and you'll see this rhythm all through the word of God. It's threaded all through the word of God. This is one of many scriptures. My pastor, my archbishop, whom I love so very dearly, 19 years of commitment to this man's life, and he's committed to my life. I share that often with you all to show you that I'm really not a man that I do believe. I'm a man that believes in relationship, and I'm a man that understands how to sit up on another man. Some people don't understand the beauty in sitting up under leadership to be aggrandized to the next level. Somebody's gotta, somebody has to validate you. It really, it really works that way in, this, in, in the kingdom, okay? You can't promote yourself in college. Somebody's got to give you the certificate. Somebody's got to write off and see and, and sign off on your stuff. It's only in the kingdom that folk want to get around the system. You can't give yourself a bachelor's associate. You've got to go through the system. You couldn't give yourself 11th grade. You couldn't go through the 11th grade trying to get to the 12th grade. You couldn't go through the 12th grade and get a diploma without somebody saying she has met all the. Mm-hmm. Only in the kingdom folk want to get around. The man of God can't do it. Joshua can't promote himself. Moses got to promote him. You know what I'm saying? That's just why I have been with. Long story short, I've been with my pastor. Not for those reasons, but I love him. And I understand the call to order. Order means in your life that you're going to get promoted. So, watch this. Long story short, so this lesson my bishop taught years ago, I never forgot it. He taught a lesson in Jackson, Florida called Send You to First. All through the Bible. Understand what the name means is powerful because now you understand when God says, man, we're in battle. And they said, Lord, we're in battle. What should we do? And then God, then the Lord gave them a word, uh, send Judah first. What he was saying was, send praise first. See, they were, they, were, they, were, they were like bewildered because they thought God was going to say send the, you know, the, the army. and No, send 
the praisers first. That's right. That's right. That's right. Send the praisers first. We about to do something for the, we about to do something to the enemy. We about to do something to the town amongst Horn. They ain't seen yet. We're gonna send praises first. You about to do something in your circumstance tonight. See, we're gonna this is what I like about these lessons. We're gonna put them into practice tonight. Uh just, just a word to us, you know, because I don't know why people be tripping. We don't just preach on relationships. Y'all know we on that thing, right? That's why Tuesday nights are like this. People miss the other part of that feeding. Why did this teach on relationship? Man, we teach on something different on Tuesday night. Okay, that's a side note. So now, this is what we're going to do, y'all, because we're going to put this thing into practice starting tonight. Now, now I'm going to jump to the other stuff. I'm going to jump to all the stuff because you need to see this. What would this mean about Judah? Judah, of course, means send praise first. All right? Mm. I know. I feel like it. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to share something real quick. Um. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Can I give you this definition? Oh, okay. Well, let's, let's do this. Let's go to Psalms 108. Uh, let's do this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to hold it in. So I'm trying not to jump around too much, all right? But I want—I need to do this, though. Okay, you, you got that scripture right there? Okay, you ready? Okay, now, the Psalms 108. Now, now this is what I want to do real quickly. We're going to look at one, two, three, four, five, five different scriptures real quick, and we're going to look at this, this, this word Judah. But what I want to give you real quickly is what happens when we send praise first. Now we're going to do is break down in the scripture what, when, when the scripture is declaring to us about Judah. It's also interpreting or feeding to us information that if you do this, this is what's going to happen to your uh -huh. enemy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Y'all you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, okay, let's go. You're Psalms 108, right? Mm -hmm. Psalms 108. If you have it, say I have it. Yeah. All right, now this is what I want you to get out of the, the, the five points I'm about to give you with this. 108. <sighs> And let's look at verse number eight. You there? It says, Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim also is the strength of mine, head. Judah is my what? Scepter. Some, some, some says scepter, lawgiver. Now, now this is what I want to do for you, right? This is what I want to do for you. The word scepter in the Bible, this is what it means. And you got to catch this because... That's what he's describing, what Judah is. All right, when we see the word scepter in the Bible, it's talking about, uh, and, and this is the definition, the word scepter is a rod or wand, W-A-N, or how you pronounce that, W-A-N-D, wand, born in the hand. You got to listen to this now. It's a rod or a wand born. Born, born in the hand as an emblem of regal or imperial power. Wow. wow. Judah is my scepter. It's a rod or a wand born in the hand as an emblem of regal or imperial power. Amen. It's royal or imperial power. Amen. It's a rod born in the hand. As an emblem of regal power. You got it? Can I get an amen? amen? All right, now, let's, let's, so, so what I want you to get with point one here with that, with that thought, what scepter means. Let's talk here, and some, some does say that in the Bible it's a scepter. Jude is my scepter, my lawgiver. Okay? So Psalms 108, praise, I want you to write this as a thought. Point one, praise is God's authority and power. Judah is my lawgiver. Praise is my power. Praise, same thoughts, is God's authority and power. That's what you write, point one. Now let's go to Genesis 49 real quick. Go to the Genesis 49, it's the Old Testament. What we're doing now is kind of watching this word Judah. 
and, and the things that God is like prophetically speaking over Judah to us. Because we know the word Judah means. Praise. All right. Very good. You're there at Genesis 49 and 8. Oh, you need to hear this. God showed me this. You need to see this thing. I'm going to show you this example, boy. This thing is real. You there? Judas is, uh, Judas is, uh, Genesis 49.8. You there? It says, Judah, Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whelp. To pray, my son, thou art going up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an li old lion, who shall arouse him? Who going to mess with him? He going to bust out on some praise. Who going to mess with him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. This imperial power shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Now look up. Look back at verse number 8, the top. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Coming from Reggie, Brother Reggie. I want you to appreciate this. Your circumstances. Let me get this with the camera. Your circumstances, when you don't praise God, have their hands around your neck. Choking the life out of you. When you begin to praise God, now you begin to choke the neck of your enemy. That's where that works. That's why we got to praise him. The hand, the hand of praise will be on the neck of your enemies. When you begin to praise, see, as long as you don't praise him, that's why the enemy tries to choke and suffocate the life out of us. Got us focused on the circumstance that's squeezing us. But when you simply begin to praise God, that's imperial power. Now you put your hands on the neck of the enemy. Yeah, you, you begin to put your hand on the neck of the enemy. That's what it says here. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand, Judah, thy hand shall be in the, in the neck of thy enemy. Yeah, when you begin to praise now, which means that you, which, which prophetically says to us, you have authority through your praise over that circumstance. Oh, y'all missed that, boy. You, through your praise, Father, I worship you anyhow. God, I, I yada you, Father. I focus my attention on you, Father. I'm not worried about my bills. I'm focusing on you right now. Right. Now you have your neck, your hands on the neck of your enemy. That's right. That's right. Things just been flipped. And as long as you don't praise him, he got his hands on your neck. That's right. That's right. Why wouldn't we want to praise the Lord? Yeah, why wouldn't we want to praise him? See, Miss Fiona, they missed a moment. See, I know sometimes the reason I don't really come out because, you know, some of y'all, you know, I love y'all, you know, not y'all, but, you know, I'll be trying to, you know, get my praise on. I want to hear about, you know, like what happened. So sometimes I'll stay in the back. I've tried it, attempted it, it don't work. So be a little different from us next door. Not that I'm trying to be antisocial. When I come in, I'm just got, you know, I'm trying to get up here to make sure that I'm giving you some fresh stuff. I don't want to be bogged down just with stuff people just share with me. And, um, but praise and worship. That's why you got to make it and try to really right. make that time to be here. Right. Uh, see, you got to understand, that's the only time during service that you do something for God. <laughs> see, right now, right now he's doing something for you. Praise and worship is the only time that you do something for him. And why people, we, we need to just have times, we just, everybody make their own praise and worship on time. And we need to have some services. I think I talked to Ms. Corliss about this last year. We really need to do it before this year is out. I want to do it. Take a Sunday. A Sunday. I don't have to preach and just do worship. Praise and worship. That's all we're going to do the whole service. And let God do what he want to do. Amen. Amen. So when we come, you know, y'all have to get prepared for about an hour worth of songs. And let God take it where he want to take it. Practice, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, this is us. 
This is us ministering to the Lord now. Amen. 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 So, so anyway, so, so get this point. When you praise him, your hands comes on the neck of the enemy. Boy, that's powerful. It's right there. Jude, uh, Genesis 49, 8. Okay, that's the point. Okay, so now. Point two, point three. I gave you Judges 20 and 18. I was getting ahead of myself. Uh, that simply is praise shall always go first. Judah 20, 18, that's point three. Praise shall always go first. A lot of times we're trying to figure out, Lord, what should we do? Now, I'm going to say something. Now, I want you to hear this. <coughs> Excuse me. Before you even pray, he said, just praise me first. Amen. 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 Who shall go first? Praise. Judah. Come on, y'all. Who shall go first? Judah. Judah. Don't even pray to me first. Praise. praise. Don't pray. Just praise me first. Just praise me first. Judah shall go first. So sometimes now we got the order out of place because we're trying to pray about the circumstance. Nothing wrong with that now. It's a, it's a place for that because we believe in prayer, right? But now we got to understand these weapons that we're giving you, prayer of agreement. So we got weapons now. We got to know which one to use. See, if you're in a situation, don't pray first. Praise, praise. first. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. If you're in something critical that you need God to shake real quick, praise. don't pray. That's praise right. first. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Mm. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woo. Yes, sir. Mm. Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 76. How many points do you have? Three or four? Three. Okay, I'm going to give you two more. How many have two? You should have three. The first point was uh, praise is God's authority and power. Psalms 108 and 8, remember? Psalms 108 and 8, praise is God's authority and power. That was point one. Point two is Genesis 49 and 8, the hand of praise will be on the neck of your enemies. That was two. And number three is praise shall go first. Y'all got that? All right. Let's go to point four. Let's go to Psalm 76 and one real quick. Amen. We got to learn how to praise the Lord. Amen. See, it's not just, it's just not a, a cliche. Hello, how are you? Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, it's got to get deeper than that for us now. Not, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You should, you should say that instead of flipping somebody off. You know what I mean? You, you, you should, you know, you should embrace them. You know what I mean? But now it's got to become more than just cliche and faddish. Amen. Hello, Bishop. Hey, praise the Lord. You know, it's got to get deeper than that. Right. Now I got to do what's on my lips. That's good that it's on my lips, but now I got to put this thing to action. Right. We have to, y'all, because I think I'm going to show you something in the scripture. I hope I get through it, man. My, you know, I don't know what they did in my clock. But anyway, um, uh, Psalm 76 and 1. I don't about shaky. You ready? Read this. Ready, read. In Judah is God known. In praise is God known. You want to know God? Praise him. In Judah is God known. That's right. I want to know God. Praise, Praise him. him. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Woo. That's right. In praise is God known. That's the point. That's, right. That's point four. Father, I want to know you. I want to know you. Praise him. Praise him. In praise is God known. No. Woo. Lord, have mercy. Hmm. That's good stuff, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Let's look at verse 2. In Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Now let's look at, that's, that's a point, but I'm going to give it to you in another text. Let's go to Psalms 114. Glory to God. Woo. 
Ooh, Psalms 114. Yeah, the devil think he got us in a fix. No, we done found something out tonight. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> devil, you go to mess with me. I'm going to break out in a praise on your fool self. You go fooling up with me if you want. I'm going to break out in a praise. You're going to make me go crazy on you. <laughs> You're going to make me go crazy on you. You better look out. <laughs> huh? I'm about to go crazy on you. <laughs> I'm about to go crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Psalms 1, yeah, Psalms 114 is a wonderful thing being in church, isn't it? Yeah. All right, Psalms 114. I don't see why people miss church, boy. I tell you, I just don't. But anyway, that's another story. Ooh, Lord. All right, Psalms 114 and 2. Judah was his sanctuary. And Israel. Praise was. If praise was his sanctuary, I know he won't praise in his sanctuary. Praise was my sanctuary. Lord, where's your sanctuary? Praise. Father, where's your sanctuary? Praise. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, God. Okay. So praise, praise is God's dwelling place. That's the point for that. Praise is God's dwelling place. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Father. Again, tonight, this is a discovered weapon. We've known about it, but it's a dis I want the God to just make it so plain tonight that we say, you know what? Man, I've been missing it right there. I see that. I see that thing right there. I'm about to put my hand on the neck of the enemy. Because he's choking, he's trying to choke me, he's trying to make me give up. So we gotta understand, I just gotta praise him. I gotta ooh, I gotta shift, I gotta go crazy. I gotta shift and begin to praise God. Can I show you some other scripture real quick? Because our time is limited. Oh Lord Jesus. Mm. Now, what is praise? Praise is simply celebrating God. That's all it is. We're celebrating God when we begin to praise the Father, I worship. Praise is always turning our attention from ourselves to God. I'm going through a little something, something, I begin to praise. I'm not focused on no more of what I'm going through. Praise always, always turns our attention from ourselves, our circumstances, our situation, that dilemma to God. It focuses our thoughts on His majesty, His power, his greatness. Why wouldn't he come through and deliver you? That's right. That's right. Here you're going, you're going through some stuff and you're just like, Father, I just worship you. You lift up a holy scepter. That's right. Imperial power. Yes, sir. You're the God of gods. Yes. The king of kings. Yes, sir. You're bigger than what I'm going. I'm yes. not going to even mention that because yes, you're big. I ain't going to focus on you think he's not going to come through for you? Here you are going through a serious dilemma. You refuse to talk about it. See, you know, we talk about prayer petition. We're not talking about prayer petition now. Prayer petition is asking him, petitioning him for something. We're not talking about that. We're talking about you in a serious dilemma, and you refuse to focus on it and begin to praise God. Praise God. And that's where he shows up and delivers you out of that. That's the key, though. That's the key right there because he's going to show up. He ain't going to let you sit there and praise him and not show up. Mm. So now when the enemy tried to do a breakout on us, so we, now we got to focus from getting into prayer because he didn't say send prayer first. <laughs> See, that's where we're missing it, and, and we're getting frustrated, and we're still frustrated when we come out of prayer. We got to pray, but he said, I don't want you talking to me first. I want to you to invite my presence in. I want you to praise me first, then we can talk later. But before you even start praying, I'm going to deliver you through praise. I'm going to come on the scene, 
get you out of that situation. You ain't going to have to pray about it because I'm showing up. There's something that God does with praise. All through the script, do your homework. He began to say, send Judah first. What we're going to do, send Judah first. Because he could have said, pray first. He could have told him, I need you huddle up everybody and pray. What we're going to do, Father, we're in battle. Send Judah first. And by the time they sent Judah first, Miss Fiona, he was already done. I feel crazy right about now. Right about, I feel crazy. Now, I know some of y'all don't feel crazy over here, but I feel crazy right about now. The enemy thought he had y'all. The devil is a liar. I feel crazy. Uh -huh. See, I ain't going crazy. I feel crazy. What? 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 Tell the enemy to back off. What? Enemy think he about to make me go crazy. I'm about to, I'm about to go crazy. Can we get? I got a couple more scriptures, y'all, and we're gonna be done. Mm. I got a few more things to give. We gotta be man, nine minutes, y'all. Y'all for real, nine minutes? Okay. Okay, I gotta obey the clock. Clock don't lie. My clock's saying ten minutes. Clock ain't lying. They ain't play with the clock. I just think I started my minute late. All right, Psalms twenty-eight. Woo. Mm. Thank you, Father. Okay. Psalms 28, you there? Let's look at verse 7. Psalms 28 and 7, you there? Ready to read. We're going to be in Psalms here for a second. I want you, I'm going to have to give you all these scriptures right now. I'm, I'm giving, I may not be able to read them all. Psalms 28, 7, it says, ready to read. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him. And I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices. And with my song, will I what? With my song, with my song, will I praise him? Come on, Psalms, uh, try to keep you here. Let's go to nine. Let's try to keep, kind of work our way up. Psalms nine. Psalm, let's do seven because we're going to work our way up. Psalms seven and one, real quick. What did I tell you? Seven. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, I need that. Let's go. Let's read. Oh, Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and what? Deliver me. Let's go to Psalms 9 and verse 10. Psalms 9 and 10. 9 and verse 10. Oh, let's talk about praise. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them. That what? Yeah, Psalm 16 and 1. See, when you begin to praise, you put trust in him. Verse 1, 16 and 1. Ready, read. Preserve me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. And that's what you're doing when you begin to praise. All right, Psalms 20 and 7. Let's write these down. It's good scriptures. Some trust in chariots. Psalms 20 and 7. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. All right, look at Psalms. Uh, let's go over here to Psalms. Ooh, let's go to Psalms 59. All these are wonderful scriptures. And that's what's happening when you begin to praise the Lord. Psalms 59. We have so I have it. Look at verse 16. Hmm, I love this one. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud 
of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and refuge. In the day of my trouble. I like verse 17. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. All right. Did I tell you to go to Psalms 54? Did we read that one already? Let's go over there. Psalms 54. And I got a few more. We're going to be uh, wrapping up here. Psalms 54. But we got to praise. We got to get in a praisey mode in, in a few seconds. All right. Psalms 54. You there? Let's look at verse number six. Ready? Read. Uh huh. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. It is good. I will freely sacrifice unto you. I will praise thy name, O Lord. Now, as we're going to this scripture here, this last one here, uh, uh, real briefly, let me see. Yeah, make sure I'm telling. I got two more. As we're going to the last two, I want you to think about this. I want you to think about the things that are ailing you, the things that you need to shift. The things that need to be uh, need need to happen like suddenly in your life. We 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 teach here God cannot do in principle for one, not do for all of us, right? He can't just like isolate somebody in the scripture. If we do the same thing they did, we got to get similar results. Okay. Where did I tell you to go? I didn't tell you where, right? All right, let's go to Psalm seven. Psalm 7, and uh, let's go to verse number 17. There? Ready, read. Verse 17. And I will sing praise. Okay, now now let's go to, write this down for reference, Hebrews 13, 15. I'm not going to go there. Hebrews 13, 15. Uh, write down Exodus 15, 2. Hebrews 13, 15, Exodus 15, 2. Psalms 13, 6. Now my last scripture for tonight is uh, Acts chapter 16. Let's go over there. Let's, let's, let's find out. Let's see this thing demonstrated. Acts chapter 16. This is just one of many. I just want to do that one. Try not to really overpower you overpower you with a whole lot of scriptures, but tonight I just want to give those to you as references. Acts chapter 16. Mm-hmm. All right. You there? Look at verse number um uh Wow, it's all good. I tell you what, let's um, look down here at uh, verse number 16. Yeah, 16 and 16. You there? And it came to pass as he went to prayer, to prayer, certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, uh, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out, of, and he came out the same hour. And when her master saw the hope of her, their gain, and that's sad, they want the little girl just to you, let the devil use her to, to, sooth, you know, to tell people their future or whatever they need to tell them. Her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone, their employment. Basically, you know, the girl was delivered now, so them devils ain't telling her what to do. They caught Paul and Silas, drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers. Verse 20, and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. <laughs> yeah, okay. And teach customs which are not lawful for us. We like the devils <laughs> around here. We don't want people to get delivered around here. We want folk helping us to prostitute, make money, doing devilish things. Amen. So lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they laid uh, many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailers to keep them, what, safely. 
verse 24, who have receiving such a charge, thrust them into to the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. So now you got to understand they've been beat with stripes, you know, and, and many folk whipped them, all right? Not just a few, the multitude, you got it? Multitude rose up together against them. That's a whole lot of folk. And the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them, all right? Now, jump down here, verse 25. Uh, and so, you know, they put them in prison and all that good stuff. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, saying, praise it unto God but now I want you to appreciate I want you to appreciate something Paul and Silas prayed and then they sang praises alright now for their learning they just did what they were just accustomed to do they began to pray but then when they give, when they start praising there's something shifted That's right. not that God didn't hear the prayer but uh, we learned to send Judah first right. it seemed like they should have caught that lesson because hey, amen this stuff was written but Thank God they got the stripes on their back. We get to read their learning and learn that we're going to send Judah first. All right, now look at this. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, say and suddenly. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were what? That's what I want you to grab hold to. What enslaved them through praise, it loosed them. That's right. That's right. Bound through their circumstance, but through praise, it loosed them. Amen. To the point, Miss Levon, that an earthquake happened. I mean, we experienced today some earthquakes. You don't really know why it's earthquake. You might not know why it might be earthquake around the world. We speak safety over our people. Can you imagine the news trying to report the earthquake that happened with Paul and Silas? They're thinking there's something going on under the earth which happened, but it was two men that were just in chains in That's a situation right. that began to sing praises to That's their God. Right. And God got so involved that an earthquake came on the earth That's and right. shook things loose. That's it. Oh, wow, y'all ain't shout amen on that. I, I know, I'm not, I'm not using this because of the sensitivity of what's going on. And suddenly there was an earthquake so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open. Watch this. And everyone's bands were what? And watch this. Everyone's bands. Y'all better hear this. See, I'm going to go crazy. And because you don't want to go crazy, you're going to get loose anyhow. You got to, you go, because you're around me. Because you're in the you in the you in the environment, uh -huh. the prisoners were in the environment. The prisoners were just in Paul and Silas' environment. So God responded to one, two men praise, and everybody in the jail got loose. See, see, you got see. That's why you got to go home, and I don't care if your house acting a fool. God going to loose your whole house. Because you went in your house and got crazy. Uh-huh. Go on your job. Everybody else might be acting a fool. But God going to loose the whole company. Because you got crazy. Now, people around you are always impacted by your praise. That's what this scripture indifies. This is what this scripture indicates. Why shouldn't our community get set free? Now this weapon of praise not only impacts my life. It was just two of them that did it. So we need at least two. We need at least two to shake stuff and to cause others around us to get loose. Others obviously did not know how to pray and praise. Two men said, let's just, you know what? They whipped us. We in chains. We ain't gonna focus on that. We're just gonna sing praises to our God. Yeah, yeah. I worship you, Almighty oh God. We just gonna sing praises to God. There is none like you. We just gonna sing praises in the midst of what we're going through, and watch God deliver us out of here. Father, I need a house. I worship you.
Father, I need you to do something. I need some stuff. I need my business. I need some. Yeah, uh-huh. We're going to praise God. Let's begin to praise God. I, I ain't focusing on what I need. I'm going to begin to praise the Lord. And watch stuff. The scripture is powerful. I'm out of time. The scripture is real powerful. You've got to read it on your own time and get a minute. you got to read this. you got to read this. People got free. Paul told them. Because the prisoners knew that the jailers knew. The, the, uh, the people that were holding the, the jailers. The, the people that were in prison knew. We about to get killed, so we're going to kill ourselves. Paul told the man, no, don't kill yourself. We're all still here. And it impacted these jailers, whatever you want to call them. I don't know what you call them. I've never been to jail. In not the, 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 what do they call the people? No, the people that, they, not the inmates, the, the people that's watching them. No, not the guards. The keepers. They, they, they were so shaken by the experience. Paul had to calm them down for killing themselves. Then they were so shaken that one of them said, look, I know this been God up in here. Could you lead me to Jesus? Uh, I need some of that Jesus now. I need some of that power. Oh, yeah. Shook him to the point where he knew, man, this is not normal. He felt it. The, the keepers felt everything that happened through the praise. Now, now, people, these people are in physical chains. God can't do for them. In principle, he can't do for one and not do for us all. I don't know what you're walking through tonight, but I'm telling you, you're about to put your hand on the neck of your enemy. Yeah. You are about to break out of that circumstance through some. Come on, let's stand up. Close your books. Let's stand up and let's do this. The enemy think he got us. No, no, we're about, we about to turn. We're about to flip something. And this is what I love about the weapons of Almighty God. These are weapons for the believer. As we study the scripture, as we study text, see, I'm just real ghetto. I'm, I am. I'm just real simple, and I try to really uh, ask God to help me. I know I have to read it from a Hebrew, Greek, and from a, uh, you know, from the custom mindset. And I ask God to help me with it, but I really ask God to help me not complicate the scripture. That's why I love the God and I try to teach it just like that. I want to complicate it. If God says something, I want to. It's just that simple. I'm not. You know, we understand when you exit Jesus, when you when you exegetically, what you had to do, make sure that you're using it, not taking out of context. But some things people are just plain as black and white. Judah means praise. We have been born and have been given the 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 power. Of praise and worship as believers. That's that's a weapon. That's a, one of the weapons. So we get to use this weapon when we need it at will. If we're walking through something, we need God to shake it loose. And we need some deliverance. We just simply need to praise God. We need his help for something. We simply need to praise him. Don't pray first, praise him first. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on. I, Let's just, come on, come on, lift your hands up. Come on, lift, lift your hands up. Father, we bless you. We worship you, Father. We praise you. You alone are God. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Jireh. We welcome you here, Father. We welcome your presence in the name of Jesus. We welcome your presence, Father. Come on, begin to praise the Lord. Give me about five minutes. We're going to be done. Father, we bless you. We honor you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your name. Yes, he praise him, praise him right there. Thank you, Father. We, your children, praise you, Father. We magnify your holy name. We glorify your name. We're not talking to you about our circumstances. We're not talking to you about our needs, Father. We just yada you tonight. We glorify your name. We bless you for who you are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, you are the God of Jacob. Father, you are the light that shines within us. Father, let our light so shine in this darkness.
of this sinful world. We bless you tonight. We glorify your name through our lives. May others see your power and glory reflected on us tonight. Father, we thank you, God, that we magnify you. We honor you tonight, Father. We keep our sights and focus on you. We're not focused on our circumstance, but our focus is on you, Father. You are bigger than life itself. You're bigger than our circumstances. You're bigger than our families, Father. We worship you tonight. You are God alone. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Kadesh. You are Jehovah Rohi. You are God and God alone. Besides you, Father, there is no other. There is no God like you. There is no power like yours, Father. <coughs> we adore you, Father. We magnify you, God. We adore you tonight. Our focus is on you, God. Lord, be high and lifted up. King of kings, Lord of lords. You are our everything tonight. Our focus is you, Father, not our circumstances. Our focus is to magnify you. Our focus is to exalt you, Father. We exalt you on high, God. We adore you tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God. We're feeling praisy tonight, and our focus is praising you tonight. We're feeling praisy tonight, and our focus is praising you tonight. You are big all by yourself. You are a delivering God. You are a majestic God. You are a God of splendor. You are a God of power. You are a God of righteousness. You are a God that saves and delivers. You are our God. We're not focusing on what we're going through. You shall deliver us out of them all. You are God. You are a good God. You are a wonderful God. And we bless your name tonight. You're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're the ancient of days. You are the God who sees through the years. You are the God who protects. You are the God who delivers. We magnify you, Father. There's nothing greater than you. Our circumstances is not greater than you, Father. Our lives are not greater than you. We bless you tonight. Come on, y'all. Lift your hands. We bless you tonight, Father. We're almost done. Yeah, just give him that praise right there. See, what you don't see, what you don't see is the stuff that he's already moving right now for you. See, see, this is what praise does. Praise is confuses the enemy. Praise confuses the enemy. What you don't see, the angels are moving on your behalf tonight. The angels are shifting. Father, we bless you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name, God. You alone are worthy. You alone are to be exalted. We thank you. We magnify you. We shabak you tonight. Woo! Glory to your God. Glory to your name, God. Woo! Glory. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you 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 for who you are, God. Thank you for who you are. We thank you tonight. We bless you tonight. We thank you tonight. We bless your name, God. We thank you tonight. Thank you tonight, Father. Thank you for life and strength. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our homes. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Thank you for life and strength. Thank you for life and strength, God. Thank you that the earthquake didn't hit South Carolina. Thank you tonight, God. We honor you tonight. We bless you tonight. You kept us through the night. You kept us through the day. We just want to say thank you. We praise you, Father. We praise you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Come on, everybody, just lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands high as you can get them. Come on, just, just, just lift your hands to daddy. This is, your hands lifted, is what we learned about the word, the scepter, which God gave that would never leave Judah. 
and that scepter is that imperial power, ultimate raw power. This is how you confuse your enemy. When you begin to lift those holy hands, imperial authority, praise invites the presence of God. Praise invites his presence into your circumstances. So whenever we're walking through something, people, the first thing we need to do is send praise first. Begin to worship Father and honor him and watch him deliver us out of them all. Come on, I need about five people that's going to help me to give the Lord. Don't you ever neglect praising God. Thank you, Father. Now, this is our homework assignment. Our homework assignment, starting tomorrow, if you want to go home and continue, it's fine in that vein. I need us waking up in the morning, and when you get yourself settled, I just need you to give God some praise. Man, we want to go ahead and practice this until we get back together next Tuesday. I just want us to get up every morning. This is what I want us to do. I really want us to pay attention to our day. Y'all understand what I mean by pay attention to your day? Let's get up and do something different. Let's get up. Before we pray, before we do our prayers, I know, I know we're praying faithfully and reading the word. Let's just find that place, five minutes, two minutes, three minutes, and begin to praise. Amen. Before we do anything, get out of bed, get settled, however you do it, and begin to praise him. And then we're going we're gonna to watch our day and watch the different activity. Yeah, we're going to watch the different activity. See, God told me something this uh, today. He said, son, he did something for our church family. We had a, a, a church credit card, and uh, the company went out of business like two years ago. And so anyway, long story short, you know, with the church credit card, we, we, we were doing stuff with the building over here, and we had about a $10,000 balance. So we were doing, you know, as we are raising money and doing stuff uh, with the building fund over here, we knew that, you know, we were paying on it as we pay it on it, you know, whatever we can pay on it a month. Long story short, and Ms. Nia was here uh, when Pastor T was, in the, was talking, well, actually when, she was, when the people called and they were talking to Pastor Tanya. So long story short, we mentioned Sunday about debt cancellation. And so I know we owed close to maybe about 11. And the people called and said to us, we, want, we were calling to reduce, the see if, to, to make a deal pretty much, and to give the church a deal for payoff. They reduced it from 11000 to $3,200. <laughs> All right. And then they gave us 30 days to pay for it. See, I dare you to praise him. See, see, see you understand. I dare you to praise him. Let, let, let me share something with you. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Then the same day, we're here at the building. I'm, I'm just really excited. I'm like, Lord, something's going on. Now, I hadn't, hadn't really locked into this lesson yet like I needed to, right? Because it was for tonight. So I know what to do now to intensify what, what needs to happen at a quicker pace this week. Same day, God said, son, I felt like God wasn't finished. So I had one of my buddy friends come by and it came by to see me, Pastor Reddish. I don't mind calling his name out. Came by to see us today, uh, two, uh, Monday. Just came by, checking on me. And um, long story short, he's walking back across the parking lot. I said, Bishop, I need to see you in the office. I need to see you at your other building. Okay, well, you need to see me. You're seeing me now. We've been together for about 30 minutes. You know, that's where I be thinking. Oh, you seeing me now. You, you know, we can talk now. As I be, you know, yeah, we're here, right? We're right here. We're right here. He went on the counter. He had somebody for a pen. And he just up there. He's writing something. I don't know. I really didn't know what he was doing. I was letting him mind his business. Thought he was writing something, a note or something. I don't know. He wanted me to do I didn't know. I really didn't know. I give people their space when they're doing stuff. I ain't be like some of y'all ear hustling and eye hustling. <laughs> Well, stuff ain't your business, you need to just back off of it. <clears throat> so I ain't like that. If I ain't, you know, I'm, I'm like that. If you over here talking, I ain't trying to hear what you got to say. I ain't tuning. You writing something, I ain't trying to see what you write. So that, that's me. So he called me back. He said, Bishop, I just want to do this for you, brother. He said, uh, he said, man of God, the Lord told me to sow this into your ministry. So long story short, he said, Lord told me to sow this to the building fund. 
He wrote the ch- he wrote the church a check for five hundred dollars to the building fund. Right? I, I know that I know that may not mean nothing to y'all. See, because that check could have been a five hundred thousand. And see, I act like it was about a five hundred thousand dollar check. Just the mere fact that God says, "Son," well, we you know we had to stop the work. This is how we do. We, you know, we get money, we raise money, we, you know, if we got money, we keep the workers work. If we don't, we stop it. You know what I'm saying? So, so the work's been stopped for about three weeks. You know, offerings, you know, they come in as you give. You know, we ain't mad at nobody. It is what it is. You know, and so, but we, we still got, you know, upkeep and mortgage and stuff. So we got to keep everything moving, and we got big giving coming Sunday. So thank you all for your participation. <coughs> Don't stay home. Amen. Amen. So, so anyway, y'all, see, y'all understand. Y'all know. See, see, I, gotta, I, I always have to make sure. And, and then this lesson tonight, not only has it blessed your life, but God is showing me, my son, I did all this in one day for you. $7,000 were knocked off. 8, 9, 10, 11, about 8, somewhere up in there. Right? 3200 And then, of course, we paid 5 that day. So, you know, and they're giving us 30 days to pay the rest of it off. Now, you understand... This bill, like some of your bills, because, you know, at the end of the day, everything falls on the bishop. That's the bottom line. My name on everything. If they go under, they're they coming after me. They ain't coming after y'all. All right, so that's how it works. So, so anyway, <clears throat> this was a concern because I'd like paying my debts. Amen. Y'all understand? Amen. You know, we just paying stuff. You know, as we're getting stuff, we got credit lines with folk. And this credit card company, again, had closed down. You know, they just closed. They just stopped doing business. But we still owe the debt. So we was paying on it. You understand? It wasn't a priority debt, but we were paying. <clears throat> Let me talk to this section. Some of y'all might not understand what I just said. No, y'all understand. No, y'all understand. It wasn't a priority debt, but it was, you know, it was paying on it. Uh-huh. Let me talk to this section. They don't think they understand. Y'all understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, but you still, in the back of your mind, you got to handle your bills. So if it's a church, want to keep the name of the church credible. When God just said, let me just go ahead and do something. Let me just erase Seven to eight thousand dollars off. That's it. Amen. Just like that. That's it. Yeah. And then let me touch a man's heart who's come from Charleston. He don't even know he's gonna give because he told me. I said, Man, man, thank you so much. He said, Well, as I was there on your property, God told me to do it. Well, my thought it was this exactly. I had this in mind. I told my wife this week, because I got something that I sensely uh, urgent, urgent in my heart believe somebody getting ready to hook us up with a check. I mean, I'm not talking about no little bit of money. I'm talking about millions. That's it. So, son, if I can touch a man hard to write you 500, and, and if you would get excited about the little stuff I'm doing. Mm-hmm. See, some, some of us miss a moment to get excited about the little stuff. You got your truck praising for the truck. Because your flatbed and your shirt, all oh, that's coming. So this praise, this don't, don't even focus on it, this praise it. See, some of you miss a moment when somebody want to bless you to lunch. That's right. When they want to do the little stuff, understand God's going to do the big stuff, but you got to go into shift to what? Praise mode. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, 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 I started to get it, and I said, oh, my God. And I felt that momentum, Reggie, Monday. Now, this is Tuesday. Now, this is yesterday. So being this lesson tonight, not only blessing you, it's blessing me because God said, now, if you just hold this course the rest of this week, Ain't no telling what's gonna happen for the people of God. Amen. Come on, one more time. Ain't no telling. Come on, hands up. Ain't no telling. I, I know I'm ghetto. Ain't no telling what's gonna happen. Come on, lift your hands. And Nia, it happened. Mr. Reddish, Pastor Reddish, you saw Pastor Reddish before you left? Look here. It happened all within about an hour and a half. It don't take long, Doc. All in about one hour. God has done credit us about eight, nine, eight, 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 five hundred dollars, nine thousand, somewhere. Man, I got to really calculate. God can have the true numbers. Just that quick, less than an hour and a half. Woo, woo, woo. Wow. Why are you sweating the small stuff? I allowed you to use their money, and I told them they're gonna race. Man, y'all better hear what I'm saying. Y'all worry about that small stuff. God going to give you the house. I don't care what, how much you order for. I'm going to cancel the debt. Yeah. Going to bed worrying about stuff. 
I knew I ain't supposed to worry. Now, my wife can tell you, I sleep good at night. Now, I ain't worrying about nothing. I ain't going to be worrying about nothing. Cause I, know I, ain't, I, ain't, you know, I ain't worrying about nothing. He ain't like they can come take nothing anyway, you understand? But I ain't worried about nothing. What I can be concerned about is my name. That's it. Keeping a credible name. Got it? That's my concern with everything we're doing. Keeping a credible name. We got credit line. We got unlimited credit line. You gotta, we got to pay folk after you still get the stuff. Keeping the line, you know, keeping that good name. But God tonight don't want us to worry. Hallelujah. Same grace on my life, on your life that canceled. Father, this week, come on, praise him. Yeah, yeah, just get your hands up. Because I'm going to speak that over your life. Now, Father, you did for us the church. Yeah, the church. Monday, you canceled thousands of dollars of debt. Now, I'm asking you starting tonight to cancel thousands of dollars. Credit card debt over the people's lives. I know it sounds crazy. I just need you to lift your hands and worship. I ain't about thinking about I just need you to worship and praise him. Cancel credit card debt over the people's lives. Cancel mortgage debt over the people's lives. Give them their houses. Cancel car debt over the people's lives. I hear that. I cancel student loans over the people's lives. Yeah, I heard that too. I heard that. I heard that when God said, cancel hospital bills over the people's lives. I cancel hospital bills. Yeah, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Furniture bills, I cancel it from over your life. And any debt that I did not speak, I cancel it with the authority of Jesus Christ. By the authority of our Lord and Savior. I know it's, I know it don't mean that. I know it may not seem it may not seem sense. A bowl to some of us, but I speak prophetically because I believe in what God tell me to say. And I just need you to come on one more time. We get ready to go. I promise you, we're gonna give him gonna go. I just need you to give him up. I just need you to give him some praisey praise. Glory to God! Woo! Glory! Woo! Glory! Thank you, Father. Thank you for doing it this week. This week. Starting now. Come on, let's give God a hand clap, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on.
Thank you.